Hey everybody, and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Mamiya. No, I guess you read it the other way, really, don't you? ZEX. In the first video, we saw what all of the buttons and things were. In this video, we're going to talk about what they do and how to use this camera to the fullest of its ability. There's this little thing down there, and I, it doesn't come unscrewed. I have no idea. Does it? Maybe it does. I have no idea what it's for. It looks like it should come off, but I don't know. It doesn't. Anyway, first thing we're going to do, because you cannot do anything with this camera unless you have batteries in it, is we're going to change the batteries. So to access the battery chamber, we just go to the bottom of the camera and, and just using your thumbnail, flip it open. And if you are lucky, there are no exploded batteries inside of it. This camera uses two A76 batteries, which are the same as 357s, LR44s, AG13. They're all the same thing. So on the underside of the battery cap, there's a little guide. One side says plus, one side says minus. That is the, the, the terminal that contacts that side of the lid. So the, the, ter the plus terminal has writing on it. And that's going to go, if you're holding the camera this way, with it, the top of it facing you on the right side. The negative terminal has no writing on it. And that goes on, again, like this, the left side. And then once you have the batteries in, you just close this. And make sure to do it gently. These, the plastic on this is not aged well. And uh, this is one of the weak points in the camera. The, if this breaks, there's a lot of tension there, and it's hard to keep it um, closed. Even with good tape, it's hard to keep it down. So that's how you replace the batteries, and you can check them by just making sure everything works. There is not, that I've found anyway, a, uh, an easy battery check option. You could, I suppose, turn on the self-timer and then turn it off. If it beeps, then you know you have battery power. So I guess that's an even better way of checking the batteries than wasting a frame if you have film in the camera. Next thing we're going to do is talk about the lens, the lens system. Um, first thing I'm going to show you how to do is mount and unmount the lenses. To remove a lens, this is the button here that you push, and you just push it in, and then turn the lens counter or anti-clockwise until it comes off. This is a Mamiya Z-Core EF. It will not work on a Canon EF camera. This is not an EOS lens, and EOS lenses will not work on this camera. Uh, you can tell it's an EF because it has these, con these two groups of contacts here. To mount it, what you want to do is look for the red dot on the flange. You can never find it. It is not this red dot. Here it is. So you want to find that red dot, which is next to this group of contacts. Line it up with that red dot. Turn it clockwise until it clicks, and now you've mounted your lens. In the first video, I alluded to the lens system for this camera being um, expandable on the cheap. And what I meant by that was on the old, on the original, on the ZE camera, the that just it looks like that. There's a little mark down here on the flange, which the ZEX lacks. That mark is where you would put a Mamiya NC lens. So here's an NC lens, and uh, the NC lenses line up with just that, the, um, that dot right there. And they line up something like this. Don't remember exactly how they go in. There we go. So when you mount an NC lens, you should be able to read the serial number when you put it in on the camera. And then you turn it clockwise, and it clicks into place. And now, if you have Mamiya CS lenses, you can use them. As, if, as you've seen, I've just gone from a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens to a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens. I've expanded my lens lineup with the same thing. Now, there are some challenges with NC lenses. They are offset a bit. So the aperture ring is down here uh, on basically the underside of the camera. There we go. And your focus mark is also here. It's offset, but that's probably about 70 degrees, give or take. So if you were going to use one of these, you just have to look off to the side to figure out where your focus is and what your aperture is set to. Also, whatever the electronic contacts do here, the NC lenses do not have those. 
so the electronic contacts won't work. There won't be anything, any data being transmitted from the lens to the camera, such as aperture and so forth. But if you are a Mamiya collector and have some NC lenses, you can use them on your Z series, ZE series cameras. Next thing we're going to do is load film into this camera, if it will open for me. Come on. There it goes. Okay. So we're going to do a sort of weird version of loading film because I can't rewind it because of the broken fork. But if you're going to load film, what you would do is you drop your film cassette in here, you would pull out, pull out a leader, and then you'd feed your leader into the take-up spool like this, and advance it. There we go. Now we know that it's going to be taken up. And then what you want to do is hit this three times until you're at start. Now, in a functional camera, this will spin as your film is being taken up. Actually, it looks like that. Because the forks on this are broken, that's not going to happen with this camera. So um, that's just a difference from normal, the way this should work. Next thing you want to do is make sure that you set your, oops, set your ISO. So we put 200 ISO film in. We're going to adjust this to 200. There we go. And now we are ready to shoot this film at box speed. We've advanced the frame to number one. We're at 200 ISO. We're ready to go. And we can just keep taking photos. Now, film is one and done. So what I'm going to show you next is something you should not do with your film. Because film can be exposed, can create, can be exposed to light one time. And that can happen in a controlled manner where the the shutter and aperture combined to create an image or in an uncontrolled manner by opening the back of your camera. So if you were to do this with real film, you would erase all of your images. But I want you to see what's happening inside your camera when you take a picture. So you take a picture and then you advance. And as you advance, the film is taken up, taken out of the cassette here and fed through the camera onto the film take-up spool. Now, when you finish with your roll of film, you'll again keep your film back closed the whole time. You push down on the rewind button and then you rewind with this. But if the forks are broken, you will rewind forever and nothing will happen because it's not engaging with the film. So what it's supposed to do with this rewind, with the rewind button pushed is pull the film back into the cassette. Pretend that's going into the cassette. It's going into the cassette, really. There we go. And help you rewind the film until you've rewound it all the way into the cassette, which I will now do off camera. So you have to push the film rewind button because the film tension sprocket, which I showed you in the uh, first video, will not allow the film to move backwards. You can see it's not allowing the film to move backwards here unless you push the rewind button and then now it's magically free spinning. So that's what this does. It keeps a film from being pulled backwards by the spring tension that's built up by being stored in a cassette. And then when you push this down, you can then rewind the film because it spins freely. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to use each of the four shooting modes. And as I mentioned, there are program, aperture priority, right there, shutter priority, which will adjust some things on here, and, and full manual mode. We talked about the fix button in the first video, we are, so we don't have to go over that again. But first thing we're going to do is talk about full manual. This is the easiest to demonstrate. When you have your film in and your ISO set and everything, and your, you can read fix on here, to use full manual mode, you select an aperture yourself and you select a shutter speed yourself. That's how you use full manual mode. If, you, if the light meter is telling you or that 1 60th at f4 is the correct shutter speed and aperture combination, then all you have to do is set it to that and you've used full manual mode. Aperture priority mode is very simple to use. You just set the shutter speed dial to A. And what that means is that whatever aperture you set the lens to, the camera will pick the best shutter speed. So let me set it to f1.7, and now let me set it to f16. 
And you could probably hear a meaningful difference in the shutter timing there. And so in A on the camera, you're in aperture priority, meaning that the aperture has priority for determining the, the exposure by controlling what the shutter speed will be. For shutter priority, first thing you need to do is take it out of aperture priority mode. And the next thing we're gonna do is go to the lens and we're going to push this white, we're gonna set it to F16, push that white button and then move it over until the white button lines up with your orange indicator line there. Now, whatever shutter speed you pick, the camera will pick the best aperture. So if you pick 1 60th, the camera will pick the best aperture for you. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to set it to one second and we should get something that's fairly well stopped down. Yeah, do that again. So look in the lens and you should see that the aperture closes a bit. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to set it to one sixtieth of a second and you should see that the aperture closes or either not at all or to a smaller opening. So not at all. Let me try it at 1 8th and see what we get. There we go. So to get into shutter priority, you want to set your aperture that way and then pick the shutter speed yourself. Now, if your shutter speed is 1 2 50th and you're in super bright light and you have super fast film, let's say it's 1 15th or 1 8th and you're in super bright light and you have super fast film, you're not going to be able to um, stop down enough. Or if you have, um, if you're in a very dark setting and you have your shutter speed at 1 250th and 50 ISO film, you're not going to be able to open up wide enough. You're, it will, you'll, be, you'll need to have an aperture setting outside of your camera's range. So aperture priority mode, or shutter priority mode rather, will only give you an aperture that is within the range of your camera. And if, and if you're trying to do something that is not, then what will happen is that the shutter, the aperture number in your viewfinder on the lower right will blink. And if that number is blinking, then you need to change your shutter speed in order to get a shutter speed that will work with the aperture range of your lens. Program mode is basically a combination of what we've just seen in the last two. Set your shutter speed to A, like this. Set your lens aperture to the white dot, like that. And now, you are in program mode, and the camera's going to decide what you should have for your photo results. And so just remember, you wanna use fix when you're in full manual mode, or aperture or shutter priority mode, but especially full manual to keep the crossover circuit on the camera from overriding your settings. If you don't, then what will happen is you can expect to get a certain result. Like let's say you want to leave your shutter open for a long time to, to catch a picture of a firework launching up and then you catch the trails of it exploding in the sky. You really, really, really want to use fix then, otherwise halfway through the exposure your camera will say, oh there's enough light, end the exposure now and it will screw up your shot. So next thing let's talk about is how to use a flash with this camera. It has a flash hot shoe, but no PC port, meaning you can put a flash on the top of the camera. If you want to control the, if you want to use flashes that are off the camera, you either have to have an adapter here that gives you a PC port or an RF adapter or something like that because there's no PC port built into the camera. So to use a flash, what you want to do is set your shutter speed to 1 60th or something slower and have a flash in here. So a few things to learn about with the flash. If you have a flash on top of your camera like you have to, then you want to get a flash that you can articulate so that it will bounce the light up and away and then bounce it off of a ceiling and back down. If you have one of those flashes that just shoots the light straight forward, sort of like this would if this were a flash. What happens is the light comes up, bounces off your subject and goes back to the lens and it makes them appear very waxy and shiny. 
If you have a, a flash that can articulate up this way and the light bounces down and then bounces off of your subject, you get a much more natural look. The reason is because whether you're outside or indoors underneath lights, when you see someone or something, you are used to seeing it lit from above. Not right now, not for the purposes of, th of this video, because I sit here, I can't put the lights here as well. But in the real world, things are generally lit from above. So if you mimic that with your flash, you're going to get more natural results. So with this camera, especially because there's no PC port, you want to have a flash that will allow you to articulate up and back. Now, with flashes, you want to use 1 60th of a second because of the way the shutter works on this camera. So let's, the shutter in this camera is vertical travel, meaning that it goes from the, uh, the curtain opens or closes from the top or the bottom, I forget which. And then it resets the opposite way. But because I can't easily contort my arms to do that, we're gonna use this demonstration showing horizontal travel, but the principle is the same. When you take a picture, the first curtain opens and then the second one closes and then you advance the film like that. So if you had a one second exposure, it might look about like that, okay, on your film. If you have a fast, if you have a slower exposure, like an eight second, it would be like that. If you had a 60th of a second, it would be about like that, okay, much faster than that, obviously. One 60th of a second is the fastest speed at which both curtains are retracted and the entire film plane is exposed to light at once. So with 1 60th of a second when the curtains are open, the flash triggers, the light bounces off the subject, reaches the film plane, and then the second curtain closes and you advance the film. So if you took a picture at 1 250th of a second with a flash, the first curtain would open and then the second one would come in behind it. And then it, the flash would trigger maybe let's say right here and what's between the curtains would be illuminated, but what's covered by the curtains would be dark. So you'd have this strip in this camera, a, a horizontal strip of illuminated and properly exposed image and then darkness. And that's because when the shutter curtain has a faster shutter speed, it's not physically moving faster, but what happens is that you get a narrow gap between the two curtains as they travel across the film plane. So if you've used your flash and just gotten a horizontal strip out of your, your image, that's what's happening. You've used a shutter speed faster than 1 60th of a second. So that's, that's how to use flashes with this camera. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look through the viewfinder, and I'm gonna tell you what's through the viewfinder with, while you look at a mock-up, and we'll see how to read all the information. Now the focusing screen on this is three, three different elements. In the center there's a circle that's a split prism. Now, if you look through your camera and you find a vertical line, then adjust the focus on your camera until that vertical line comes together into a single line in that center prism. Everything on the same plane as that vertical line will now be in focus. The next thing you wanna do is take a look to one side of it or some, find some sort of area that, that you can see and look at that prism area around that central circle and go in and out of focus with it. And in focus, everything looks like it's, well, focused in that prism area, but out of focus, it looks like it's been run through some sort of triangle filter in Photoshop or something like that, where what's out of focus has all of these triangles visible over it. So with that prism surround around the split prism in the very center, you can tell if it's in focus because you're not seeing triangles. Now with the rest of the matte screen, you can tell if it's in focus just by looking at it and whether or not what's on the matte is in focus. Now the viewfinder has some information that it gives you. In manual mode, on the bottom right, there's an M. In program mode, on the bottom right, there's a P. And that's it. In those two modes, it does not give you any exposure data. In aperture priority, what it will tell you is your shutter speed and aperture. And in shutter priority, it will tell you your shutter speed and aperture. So if you want to use manual mode, what you wanna do is switch it to, auto, to aperture priority, select the aperture you would like, then look through your viewfinder and see what shutter speed it says to use, and then adjust your camera to that shutter speed. It's it's quite honestly like they did not want you to use manual mode with this camera. They just said, well, well let's put it in there because people will want it, but let's not, let's not make it easy for them. 
So the viewfinder along the bottom has those red lights, uh, L LED, LCD, LED, I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's L an LCD that will tell you whether you're in manual mode, program mode, or if you're in one of the two semi-automatic modes, your aperture and shutter speed. If your aperture or shutter speed are blinking, so if you are in aperture priority mode, let's say, and you set the aperture to f1.7 and you point it at a bright light, your shutter speed will blink 1 1,000th because that tells you that you need a shutter speed faster than 1 1,000th, 1 1,000th, which the camera cannot deliver. So you have, if, the shutter, if you're in aperture priority and the shutter speed is blinking, you have to adjust your aperture setting until the shutter speed is not blinking. In shutter priority, if, you're, if you set the um, shutter speed and the aperture is blinking, then what that's telling you is that you have to adjust your shutter speed until you get to a number where your, your, that is within your lens's range. So if you set it to, uh, let's say, um, 1 15th and you point it at a very bright light, it might flash 16, telling you that you need an aperture smaller than 1 16th, so, um, which your lens can't do. So if you're looking through your viewfinder and the camera has a flashing bit of data in, your, in one of these two modes, it's telling you that it cannot achieve the required shutter speed or aperture with that mode. You have to change your settings. So all of that understood, let's talk about the process of taking an actual photo with this camera. And we'll run through it in manual mode and aperture priority so that because aperture priority and shutter priority are functionally the same, just with a different ring that you adjust. In aperture priority, after you have your film loaded and your ISO selected, what you do is you set your camera to automatic, or in shutter priority, you set the, the aperture ring to the white, having the white pin lined up with the top. Then you just select the aperture you want to use, focus on your subject, uh, there we go, and take your picture and you're set. That's how you take a standard photo. In manual mode, you want to take your meter reading here, half to press the shutter button. That will tell you what settings to use with the aperture you have. Switch out of aperture priority, adjust it to the shutter speed that you have been told to use, and take a picture. There we go. And that is same thing again. You also want to make sure that you focus both times. But that is how you take a picture with this camera. It is very intuitive and very simple to, to do that. All right, that's great. So that's how you take a single exposure. What about double exposures? Before we get into the science of it, let's just learn the mechanics of how to do a double exposure. And the process is you would take your first frame in your double exposure, you'd hold this lever off to the side, you'd advance, and then you'd let go. Holding this lever causes the shutter to rearm without having the film move. Then you take your second frame, and then you advance. Important step here, make sure you're in a manual shutter speed, grab your lens cap, a fast manual shutter speed preferably, and take a dead frame. You take the dead frame because after your second exposure, while you, since you've overridden the gearing, it takes a partial frame for it to re-engage. So if you take your double exposure and then you take another frame, you're going to have some amount of overlap, which could ruin both your double exposure and your next frame. So you take the dead frame to allow the film to re-engage and move into clear film where you can then take another shot, okay? So that's the mechanical aspect of it. Let's understand the scientific aspect. We're going to start in manual mode because it's very easy to understand and illustrate in this mode. Let's say that f5.6 at 1 1 25th of a second is a proper exposure. Well, if you hit the film with two proper exposures, it's going to be very dark. The negative will be very dark, what they call thick. And that makes it hard to digitize because you'll get digital artifacts and low contrast. That makes it hard to print in the dark room because you'll get low, low contrast and very long print times. So you want to have a proper exposure, and that means cutting the amount of light in half to get a double exposure. Now these numbers over here in white are fractions, so a higher number means a faster time. 
So 1 250th of a second is half as much light as 1 1 25th. Take our first shot, hold the lever, it, move the advance to rearm the shutter, take the second shot, cover the lens, dead frame, or advance. Now we take our dead frame, and that's how we do it in manual mode. You can also adjust the aperture. As a matter of personal preference, I prefer to adjust the shutter speed to move it one stop uh, faster, uh, one, one number higher. I tend to think of aperture as being more important for my creative process when I'm taking photos, so I like to have control over this. Shutter speed is less often, to me, more important than aperture. So that's how we do it in, in ma full manual mode. What about aperture priority? Aperture priority, program, and shutter priority are done the exact same way. So what you're gonna do is push this button here and you're going to set your EV compensation dial to negative one. Negative one tells the camera to have one stop less light. In aperture priority, it will, it will make the shutter speed one stop faster. In shutter priority, where you set this to a specific number and then adjust the aperture ring so that the white dot is on the center, it will close the aperture down one stop to, to achieve this. In program mode, it will do whatever it wants to achieve that. So let's say we're in aperture priority. What you do is you set your aperture to what you want, take your first shot, advance while holding the double exposure lever, take your second shot, set it to a manual shutter speed, take your dead frame, and that's how you do it with your uh, aperture priority, shutter priority, or um, full program. Then when you're done, you just make sure you set this back to zero, otherwise you will screw up the exposures on the rest of your roll of film. And that is it. That is the Mamiya ZEX. We have covered everything there is that, to know about this camera, everything you can do with it, uh, as it is straight out of the box. They are lightweight, very capable cameras, a little bit behind their time technologically, but that's okay because they can still do 99.9% .9 of what you would want to do with them. Uh, if you have one of these, uh, I could definitely see enjoying it and using it and liking it quite a bit because realistically, there are not many functions that this um, camera will leave people wanting. So, if this video series, or just this video, I suppose, were helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have questions or comments, please submit those below. I'm pretty good about checking comments every day or two, and I'm happy to respond to your questions. If you have suggestions or ideas for future videos, please leave those below as well, because um, if I have the technical know-how and the equipment, I'm happy to make those. If you would like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos, including someday after I repair this camera, the video review about it with photos that I will take with it, then please uh, subscribe and turn on your notifications. And one last thing, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next camera video series.